South Africa was founded in 1989, we realized even then that geographic information system technology could help improve society and our communities. Working with others who shared this passion, we were encouraged by the vast possibilities of GIS. Passionate Emerging Business Partner, Map Scientific Services, combines the latest geospatial technology with big data analytics, meticulous research, and dust and boots fieldwork to develop customized solutions that support biodiversity conservation, ecological restoration, and sustainable development projects. One of their customized solutions that Michael Moll, a co-founder of the company, will take us through is their integrated fire management solution. Hi, everyone. Thanks very much for the introduction and the opportunity to present today. For this presentation, I'm going to start off with a bit of background as to why we developed the solution uh, and then get into some information about the solution itself. And I'll end off with a demonstration on some of the applications that we've developed. So thanks once again for joining us and I really hope you enjoy the presentation. I'm going to start off by showing you this really incredible animation created by NASA's Earth Observatory team. And what it's showing are the locations of actively burning fires on a monthly basis for nearly the past two decades. The data is based on observations from the MODIS instrument on NASA's Terra satellite. And it's just extraordinary to see just how many fires there are across the world from year to year. In particular, the seasonal distribution and trends of fires from month to month over time. Each year, fires such as these have a massive impact on the environment, people, and the economy. The scary thing is, is that the data suggests that due to climate change, changes in extreme weather events, and increasing human populations, more and more people and places are going to be affected by fires than ever before, with the impact and reach of fires increasing significantly. And these, these impacts have become very apparent in recent years. Take for example the recent Australian bushfires, Towards the end of 2019, heat waves coupled with extended droughts resulted in extreme bushfires in Southeast Australia. The fires were so large that imagery captured here on the 2nd of January by the MODIS Aqua Satellite showed smoke plumes stretching for hundreds of kilometers off the coastline. The fires impacted almost 11 million hectares of land, destroyed close to 6,000 buildings and almost 2,000 homes. So what's happening here closer to home in South Africa? Well, fires cost the economy almost 3 billion rand every year. In the free state alone in 2019, almost 150,000 hectares was lost due to fault fires. And many of those fires affected numerous communities, informal settlements and properties across the province. Satellite imagery captured here by the Copernica Sentinel-2 mission shows a fire which is almost just over 100 square kilometers in size. And in less than a day, this fire almost destroyed close to 40 properties. Fires such as these will become more common and drier in a warmer South Africa. So the question is, what can we do? How can we reduce the impact and mitigate the risk of fires? Well, using the latest in satellite technology, our solution aims to improve fire management and mitigate the impact and risk of fires by supplementing and improving the following core aspects of fire management. First of all, the ability to detect fires and assess the impact an active fire may have on the ground. Secondly, by supporting fire statistics, by generating data and tools to report on where, when, how big and how often fires occur. And lastly, developing systems to integrate planning and ultimately prevent fires from occurring. So focusing on these core principles, we have put together online applications that can be customized for our clients' needs specifically relating to detecting active fires, analyzing burn scars, reporting on fire statistics, and facilitating planning and fire prevention. So these applications can be catered for for our multiple users, including fire protection associations, fire and disaster management services, insurance companies, government departments, or private industry. I'm now going to demonstrate some of the um, applications of the solution and I'm going to start off with our fire detection applications. Right, so here we have a view of one of our detection dashboards and these can be customized to suit our clients needs. But in summary, what we are showing are near real time data of thermal anomalies picked up by VERS and MODIS instruments at three hour intervals and supplemented with extra location data. The dash allows viewers to assess potential active fires displayed in the map. 
So for example, over here in this view, the data is showing points detected in South Africa, and there are a total of 453 anomalies that may be associated with fires occurring on the ground. For each of the points, we have time associated with them, and these are displayed over here in the graph below, or as specific time periods that can be filtered. We also have regional data associated with each point. So in this example, we can see that majority of the points are occurring in the province of Pumalanga. Other data of interest is, for example, the distance of each of the points from the nearest populated place. So in this example, majority of the points are occurring within 5 to 10 kilometers of a populated town or city. We can also look at the percentage of points that are covering specific land classes. In this example, 31% of the data is occurring within or on top of natural wooded land. Of course, this gives us the ability to filter the data down further. So if we're only interested in looking at what's taking place in Pumalanga, and breaking it down further by how many fires are occurring by district, we can. We can also even look at only fires that may be occurring within natural grasslands, say for example. And here it tells us that there are 21 points occurring on natural grasslands. By zooming into specific points of interest, we can assess the risk or impact of those fires even further. In this example, I've zoomed into two points located in the province of Pumalanga, and we can see that the closest place they are occurring to is a town called Creel. The distance to Creel is approximately three to four kilometers. And we can also see the property that the fires are occurring on. We can assess the landscape itself even further by viewing different layers. These layers include the national land cover. So we can assess the land cover surrounding the points of where the points are occurring. We can also view the latest sentinel imagery captured within the past five days of the landscape. Because of this, we can also have a look at NDVI as well as moisture index levels within the properties itself. Information such as this is valuable to assess the risk that the fire may have on the ground. Other forms of layers that we provide is weather information as well as fire danger index. The fire danger index depicted here in the map is a representation of conditions on the ground which may be conducive for fires occurring. Right, that's it for our live fire dashboard. Next, we're going to move on to reporting and statistic applications. So the applications for reporting and statistics are founded on post-fire burn scar analysis. For every fire that occurs, a burn scar is left behind, which represents a significant change in vegetation. So what we do is we generate the data layer by automatically mapping burn scars every 5 to 10 days after they occur, using high resolution satellite imagery. This produces polygons with extra supplemented data. So what this means is that for every burn scar, we can get associated data such as size of the fire. In this case, the fire left behind a scar of about 105 square kilometers in size. We're not only producing burn scars for large fires, but also small ones as well. Here we have an example of a burn scar less than a hectare in size. Because of our ability to map such small fires, we're also able to identify control burns. In this example here, we, we've identified a fire break occurring alongside a main road. So using this approach, we, we've essentially generated an accurate database of burn scars across South Africa that is updated every five to 10 days. This allows users to zoom into a specific area of interest. For example, over here we have had 128 burn scars, of which 850 hectares were affected across various different landscapes or land types. Our dataset also allows one to filter the data down further, so for example by province, district or municipality. You may be interested in fires which have only occurred within 10 kilometers of a town or city. You may also only be interested in fires which have occurred within residential land cover types. So in this example, there are 16 with such trends. We can also have a look at fires that were perhaps greater than 2000 hectares in size. Last year in 2019, there were numerous fires occurring here 
on the eastern boundary of the Free State. Once the data has been filtered down appropriately, we can then generate reports on the data. And these can be accessed over here using our report generating tool. We have various types of reports that can be generated, right down from a basic burn scar report all the way to a summary at the provincial level. The most basic of reports that we can generate is a burn scar report. So one simply only has to select the fire of interest and then actual, actually follow through with the report itself. Now what that generates is a actual map of the fire, the burn scar itself, the information associated with that fire and the total area that had been burnt. One may also be interested in assessing the impact that a specific fire may have on specific properties. In this case, one can use the farm property summary report to investigate the actual impact that fires may have had at the property level. A report is generated showing a map of the actual fire, but in this case, it also highlights the farm properties that were affected. In this case, 45 farm properties in total, and a breakdown of those farm properties, including the names of those properties, as well as the amount of area that was lost to the fire itself. Right, so other reports or um, summaries that may be of interest to fire management that can be generated using our application are regional summaries. In this example here, we've summarized the number of fires as well as the area burnt within a specific district of the Free State. And here is a summary of all those fires as well as the statistics related to each of those fires. Other reports that may be of interest include specific areas of interest. Over here, we generated a report on the number of fires as well as the area burnt within a five kilometer radius of a specific cell phone tower. Overall, we've provided a complete application to extract accurate data on fires and burn scars that provides a vital backbone to fire management. Next, we move on to our tools and applications for fire prevention and planning. By collecting data on where, when, why, how many, how big, and how often fires occur, we provide the opportunity for fire management to not only assess impact and inform stakeholders, but also plan and coordinate actions towards preventing fires. And this can take place at various levels from the private landowner through to the national level. Our long-term database provides fire management with the opportunity to assess regional statistics. For example, how many fires have occurred or where those fires have occurred. We can also assess when fires are occurring or how large the impact of those fires are. In this example, the majority of fires occur in June in the Free State, but the highest impact or highest area lost takes place in the month of October. This allows one to identify potential areas of high risk of fires or the impact of fires. Or we'll even take it a step further and identify communities which are most at risk due to fires. By doing so, we can then plan and implement the correct prevention strategies for fire management. And by collecting data at the property level, we can also assess the success of those prevention strategies and even regulate and enforce fire management with farm owners directly. Overall, these tools provide for powerful information for fire prevention strategies. Right, so that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, I think I'm just going to end off by reiterating that we know the impact of fires is going to increase in the future. By incorporating all three aspects of fire detection, statistics and prevention strategies, systems such as ours can reduce the impact that fires are likely to have. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the presentation. Thanks so much for listening and feel free to contact us anytime or check out our website. Thanks very much. Cheers.